Hello everyone and welcome to episode 3 of Lore Quest. Um, today I am joined by H and Tom, as per usual. Uh, how are Hello. You, how are you doing, H? I'm doing good, thanks. Um, we're getting ever so closer to store champs and more uh, 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 attainable Lorcana challenges, so things are getting exciting, heating up. How are you guys? Everything's been heating up in the uh, in the meta and the, the tournament. Mm. Loads of things to report on this week. We are great, aren't we? We've had a good day. Yeah, we've had a decent day. Evie is now old. It was her birthday yesterday. She's now 30. Yeah. Happy birthday, Evie. Yeah, Thanks. Happy birth or happy birthday. belated birthday. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we didn't do much yesterday, did we? No. No, we just chilled out. We tried so. not to do anything at yeah. all. And it, of course, didn't work, and we ended up doing stuff anyway. Yes. Yeah. So, but yeah. So this week we have got. Uh, first of all, I want to touch on something from the missing episode two because people hopefully will have noticed that uh, episode two didn't happen. So we've gone straight from one to three, and that would be because our audio didn't work. No, this was supposed to be episode four. Was it? Yeah. Oh. Different. So we've missed episode three. Okay. We've done episode one and two. Oh. Episode two, count. me and H did on our own. Oh, that wasn't Yes, here. our solo. Uh, yes. yes. Of course, that's why I don't remember that one. I'm like, but I've mm. only recorded two. I don't, under, like, I don't understand. No, it's so this this is the missing episode. This is a replacement. So what we touched on in the episode that we recorded was the death of Pixelborn. Uh, and we won't go over it too much, but I will say that the what seems to be the biggest explanation is Disney protecting their IP basically their intellectual property they don't have a choice it's not financial for them other than the fact that they could lose a lot more money than people think that they can so to explain it to anybody who is unfamiliar with copyright and intellectual property law if you allow someone to use your intellectual property without sort of in any kind of contract or anything like that you open up the entire intellectual property for anybody to do that and that could cost Disney a lot of money because uh, you could start seeing knockoff versions of just about everything and they couldn't do anything about it because the precedent would have already been set by Pixelborn so that a lawyer could then argue that, well, you didn't shut this guy down when you had the chance to. You didn't sign a contract with this guy. Why do you need to sign a contract with this guy about it? You've already let this IP go into the wilderness. It's not yours anymore, it's public domain stuff or whatever they refer to it as for intellectual property, which is slightly different to public domain. But that's the reason why, for anybody listening who's like, Disney are an evil mega corporation, they don't actually have any choice. They have to do it. Um, so yeah, so that's why, but that we, we touched on it quite a lot in the in the Lost Archive of episodes. So Lost Archive, yeah. Yeah, so if we ever get there, um, we go for that. But. Also, I think with, with you saying more people would make knockoffs, um, I think we're quite lucky right now that um, we basically got Pixelborn for free and everything was free on it. I feel like if we, the more, if they open this floodgate to all these copies coming through, um, the creators behind, I think, all the other clients wouldn't be as kind as Pavel to give it all for free or give you a up to date client. I think they'd be riddled with issues and paywalls and things like that. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's my he, take. He, yeah, he, the other the other thing as well was uh, like to do with it. He was actually making money off it. Now, what he did with that money, uh, so as far as I am led to believe, he was donating. He was keeping his the thing alive, and then everything else he was donating away. But it doesn't really matter because he was making money off it, and you can't yeah. do that. You, yeah, at the end of the day, yeah, if there's some sort of income coming in for him, regardless of what he's doing, yeah, it, it yeah. There's not much that Disney can do apart from saying, right, shut it off because yeah, it's to ours. Super, yeah. They've, they've got to be super careful and protect it, basically. So mm -hmm. without going but yeah, we've had no um, no official announcement of a new client yet, which I didn't think we would after the first week. But Pavel did announce a new version of Lorcana um, where you don't play um, with... Uh, it's not like an online client to play... Uh, a game so to say you use your own webcam and a setup and you will film yourself playing a game against an opponent which is still good i think it's the only thing they can do right now and i'm glad they're st like at least he hasn't the good thing is pixelborn is still alive in some state um 
and it's good that people that can't play in person can still technically play this. Um, obviously, it's more difficult because you're going to have to get the cards and Pixelborn is a free way to test things. But even with friends, I'm hoping they open up some like some. Uh, I hope it's not just tournament play. You could you can connect with a friend and webcam. You could probably do it over Discord as well, but like to have a full on just a uh, 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 a client to play play it through. I think it's really good. Yeah, I think that would work. Um, mm. I, I like the idea of it, it but it, you can do it yourself over Discord if you're super precious yeah. about it, right? Yeah, and, and realistically for most people it's not that hard to set up. No, it shouldn't be. Like, just need a webcam and a desk. It also very much feels like what all the other card games did during the pandemic. Yeah. In that yes. they were still running tournaments, uh, it was just all over Discord. Yes. Um, I guess the only thing is that you have to be more wary about is cheaters yeah. because there's some sleight of hand you can pull, but oh. it depends what the rules are. I haven't fully looked into what Pixelborn no, are expecting from people, yeah. um, but I'm assuming everything has to be shown on the table at all times. Um, I imagine so. Yeah. So we'll they'll, they'll, do, they'll do right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we're going to have a quick chat about the meta. Uh, mm. The most recent, as far as I'm aware, in-person large event that took place over uh, three events that took place over the UK Games Expo weekend. Uh, yep. so they did one Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now you have to bear with me because uh, my eyesight has gone to absolute balls for some reason. I'm not sure why. Uh, where I have to have far and near glasses now. So um, Friday's tournament was 64 players, which is quite a good turnout. Um, and it was won by Bucky Discards Green Steel uh, by Gary Michael. So congratulations, Gary, if you actually end up ever listening to us. That's fantastic. Uh, second place was Sisu on Ice, which I imagine is the Sisu with Ice Block deck. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can think that. And that deck was called Pile uh, by Isaac Murray. Um, third place was Ruby Amethyst Bounce Control, uh, piloted by Nathan Mills. And if it's the same Nathan Mills, I actually know who that is. He was a Yu-Gi-Oh player. Um, so well done Nathan, third place, congratulations fourth place or top four was Mufasa 4.0 which is the red yellow version uh, so it would be just be an updated version of the uh, the old list I would have thought and that was uh, Sean MS and then the top eight was rounded out by uh, purple, uh, red purple, blue steel uh, bl yeah blue steel, blue red, blue red uh, so Cogsworth and Ice, two more, sorry, Cogsworth and Friends and two more Sisu and Ice and another Bounce Control. Um, mm. So uh, Blue Red, one, two, three versions of Blue Red, two versions of Red Purple, one Blue Steel and one Blue Red and one Green Steel. So that's quite varied in my opinion. I think that's quite... I, I think that's quite a nice spread of a top eight. I yeah. think it's good as well to see. So even though I'm a Red Blue player, um one of the decks that came in as a one out of that top eight managed to get through. Obviously, he must have played the blue-red in the final, but to, to what he played before that could have been Ruby Amethyst, blue-red, or blue-steel. Probably blue-red again, maybe? Or so Ruby played, Amethyst? Uh, the blue-steel's got a good matchup now, right? Yeah, so he would have had to have played uh, either blue-red, blue-steel, or uh, red Ruby purple. Am yeah. Ruby Amethyst, yeah. because they are the, the rounding out the top four decks, so they all had to, so realistically you're looking at <clears throat> unless you got two mirror matches, which is possible, which is Blue Red versus Blue Red and Ruby Amethyst versus Ruby Amethyst, that would then put um, Blue Red against Green Steel and Mufasa against uh, Purple uh, yeah yeah, so basically it's a bit weird. There's loads of mirrors or mm. not. I don't know. Uh, I could work yeah. it out given a little bit more time, but I'm not going to. So, But mm. three blue-red, that's the thing. But he didn't win. Uh, their most hated deck in the format won, which is green steel. Yes, and the, the issue we're going to have here is this green steel one. Obviously, we don't know the full-on numbers of the 64 players, but just because one solo green steel got into the top eight and then the top four and then one, people are going to hate that deck even more. Yeah. Um, just on Twitter this week, the amount of green steel hate. I, I, maybe I'm just not as like tuned to it as everyone else because I'm playing a deck that ha has a good matchup against it, but people hate the squirrel. 
People yeah. hate Bucky. I get it. People, it stops your ability to play, but like people really hate it. So, I I think that see the thing is this deck existed before, like in set three, this deck mm -hmm. was a thing, and it, didn't it, it I don't think it was that anyway. great, or at least the Bucky variant, and and the issue was the draw power, and now Diablo, it, it's it, like they they miss. There was one issue with it, and they actually got like every answer they needed. Um, thank God Diablo hasn't got Ward instead of Evasive or things like that. Because um, that would make it... Actually, I don't know. Because Evasive, yeah, I guess it's top foot. It's yeah. Um, if you had but... Ward as well, that'd be awful. That would be... I don't... Yeah, it's definitely not going to be a card. But um, yeah, it's just everyone hates Bucky. As we, as we look into the other tournaments, we'll... Yeah, well, we'll you see. Know, this isn't the only one out of the three days. No, if no, you want to go is, into uh, Saturday... So... Yeah, so Saturday was a 61 players, so three players less. Uh, this was won by uh, Cesar on Ice, Blue Red. And he played, let me see if it's, yeah, it's a different person, uh, but Gary Michael piloting Green Steel made the final against him as well. So Green Steel. So the guy that won the, the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Guy oh, Gary. First one finished second in the in this one. Well done, Gary. Another good result there, mate. Uh, so I'll run through the top the top eight. Uh, Cecil and Ice, blue red, uh, green steel discard. Another green steel discard. Uh, Ruby amethyst. Another green steel discard. Uh, blue red. Uh, Ruby amethyst. <laughs> and blue red again. So yeah, no no wild outside deck. So no blue steel. In this one, and no red, yellow Mufasa. In this no, one. they've actually they've just been replaced by green steel. Yes. Every every other combo color one. combination has the same numbers. Green steel has just been up by yes, two. It has. Yeah. Which is fair enough to to me. That looks more realistic of the meta. Yes. In uh, terms so, of the better decks. Ever so slightly smaller tournament, uh, but you've got a stronger blue red uh, representation in this one, I think one, two, no, no, exactly the same. No, you're right. No, exactly. Yeah. The yeah, same, exactly same with same. Ruby Amethyst. Yeah. Ruby Amethyst still there, like all the way through. Uh, so, uh, Culver 82 won it with blue red. So well done Culver. Uh, and stew spelt with a W by the way. So stew, like the meaty potato -y thing, uh, was third and Jim T three was fourth. So well done those people. Uh, but yeah, so that I think is a, a bit better of a representation of what the meta is going to look like. Um, although if there's a lot of a lot of green steel, blue red and blue steel are very good against that deck. Yeah, I think it's worth once we've gone through these three tournaments. Just to, I'd like to have just a quick talk on blue steel. I know sure. you have started playing the deck, so it'd be good to get your yeah. hands-on opinion. But obviously, yeah. it's just kind of crept crept up silently, and now it's a thing. So. Yeah, certainly. But we'll talk about that after these yeah, lists so for Sunday, sure. Sunday is uh, back to 64 players. And we have uh, the same winner as day one, which is uh, Calvert 82. Oh, sorry, oh day, no, two. day two. Sorry, day yeah, two. he yes. piloted a different deck. Yes. He, he came back with deck. Green Steel. <laughs> he swapped decks and came back with Green Steel. Uh, Nathan Mills was second with Ruby Amethyst. Uh, third place was Jim T with Ruby Amethyst. And fourth place was uh, Boomy with Cecil and Ice Blue Red. Uh, fourth place was Lewis Malone with, uh, sorry, top eight was Lewis Malone with Blue Red. Uh, Song, uh, who was back from day one with Purple. Was he playing Purple Red in, the, in day one? He was, yes, he yep. Was. Yeah, yeah, he was, yeah. Uh, Danny O'Donnell playing bur uh, Purple Red. Uh, the aggro version, the which aggro is cool. Version. Arthur aggro version. The unexpected Arthur. Yeah, so that's cool. And then we've got Dolo Seven, who played yellow green discard, who made the top eight. He went four two. So, yeah, there you go. Now I don't know if this is a. I assume this is a cut, right? They they cut these to top eight. I imagine. I can only imagine they did that. Mm. But the bottom two of this one both went four two. Uh, no yes. IDs by the looks of it. Nobody ID'd in because there's very few draws registered. Or maybe the top two guys ID'd in. It was 501. So, yeah, we've got a 501 and then a third place got a 512. Yeah, which is. Uh, and then someone in top yeah. eight got a 411. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's the. Um, 
that's the breakdown. But yeah, so you're a lot more purple red uh, making the old uh, the top cut in day three this time, and a lot less blue red. Blue red's only yeah. got two two slots, and purple red's got four. So that deck is still very much alive. Mm. I like how we've got like that one rogue aggro as well. Yeah, um, aggro deck. I, I from what I've seen for the new list with Ruby Amethyst, um, they are definitely quicker aggro uh, based. They're using the new two drop Flim Rider, um, and obviously if he doesn't die, you can do turn one, Chernobog's followers, turn two Flim Rider, and then turn three you play the rare Sisu, which gains attack for cards in your opponent's hand. And obviously, Flim Rider is if you control a card with more attack than something on your opponent's side, you gain three yes. at the start of your turn. So as long as Flim stays alive, that Sisu is probably the best turn three play you can do. Or maybe you Fox Bounce something and then you have something with four attack. Yeah, so. I, I have tried variants of this deck, actually, when the format first started. Uh, mm. I didn't have a lot of success with it. Uh, I didn't necessarily do it as much of an aggro list, honestly. Maybe I should no. put a little bit more effort. But that, that's definitely like the early plays, get that flin yeah. out, making sure he survives. Um, yeah, I haven't actually game. played any Ruby Amethyst since the set started. I have the pieces from the set three variant, but um, yeah, I haven't even, I've just been on blue red the whole time. So Yeah, um, I think that keeping that flin rider when everyone's running Brawl to kill uh, Diablo is quite hard. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're coming up against red blue, they run four. It's just another target. So. Uh, so. It's winning without it. That's the key, I think. Mm. Uh, but yeah, so what do you think of all them? I, I, I mean, I love the fact that there's a yellow green in the in the top eight. I like that. Top. So that's the part of your world discard deck. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, that's so. That's a really fun one, and it's actually one I'd probably like to play. It's a shame, really. We're talking about how Pixelborn's going. Yeah. I, a lot of these decks I'd like to play. I just I cannot be bothered to proxy them all up which is why Pixelborn was so good. But that's something I'd like to at least play with, just as kind of a joke. I, I feel like it's a good deck. It's just outshined by other decks. Um, but that is all to do with uh, either discarding cards from your opponent's hand or lowering every all the attack stats on your opponent's cards and then bouncing them back or returning them to the bottom of the deck with that. I think it's called Part of Your World. No, is, is that that's uh, under the sea, right? You're thinking of, right? Under the sea. The eight-cost one that... I, yeah, the, there's something, and it, I'll look it up now, but it, it basically, anything co that costs two or less goes to the bottom of your opponent's deck. Yeah. Um, and you can is. chain that, yeah, and you can chain that with um, the muses and things like that to bounce your own cards back to the hand. Um, and... They run Lady Trigger, uh, don't they, to pick it back up again? Um, they, they can do. Um, uh, yeah, to just keep repeating the process. And you just keep playing uh, Shift Keeda. Yes. Uh, so you can bib you can play Shift Kida. I think Kida can sing Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo, bounce herself back, play something else. Then you do. You can like full on sing. Yeah. And so then she, you can sing songs and pick them back up again, and the muses like picks your Kida back up, and it picks your Lady Tremaine back up, so you can. Yes, you just basically just keep re-spamming the board, yeah. um, while also making your opponent discard. Yeah. Uh, so oh, yeah, Under the Sea, a, yeah. I think one of the pros was playing it for a bit, right? They developed it early on, because I had a version of yeah. it built, and I didn't like it very much. I don't, But then I don't think I probably piloted it very well, so I'll go with it being my fault, not the deck. Yeah, it takes like a, a few weeks for people to just find like the, the better cards for it. But um, yeah, it's just an interesting deck. I always like seeing just one random kind of color combination thrown in. Um, and obviously we say that about day three, but when we, when you look back at day one, the only one rogue color combination in that list is Blue Steel, which isn't a rogue deck and is no. probably in the top three decks. Um, I um, think so. Depend I think it depends on just how much green steel there is. Yeah, because that's the only reason I think this deck has come up, because people wanted a more reliable way to beat green steel. Um, it just folds to blue red though. That's the that's yeah the problem. It really does. Well, like... the thing is, I think you've still got so that with the blue red, we we don't or they don't. At least in the builds now, they're not running any item destruction. Um, and blue steel can focus oh, yeah. just on dining your way to victory. Uh, you've got loads of options. You've got aerial, uh, the new aerial. You've got Tamatoa. Uh, some lists run Bell. I think the list I sent you earlier had Bells in as well. Yeah, let me just um, quickly go back to this list. 
Did you send it me or did you send it to chat, group chat? Oh yeah, I sent it to the group chat. Because because of the uh, resurgence of Blue Steel, Tom is not the only one in our group now deciding to run Blue Steel. No. Um, <laughs> so, so this version actually runs the a different aerial, uh, I think. Or it doesn't even run it. Maybe it doesn't run it. He might so, not run it, and he, and he might have chosen to run the bell instead. It's yeah. Savage's list. Um, yeah, so this is, this is Savage's list. Uh, we can cover a little bit of him at some point as well, because I don't know if you've heard anything about his uh, incident at live gaming. Forgive me for taking the glasses off. This Savage's list is uh, four Mr. Smee, three Bell, four Grand Martala, prime choice. We like Grand Martala. Uh, four Flavisham, obviously. Uh, four Cogsworth, which is like the bane of every deck's existence. Trying to play against that card is really hard. Uh, two of the five cost Beast. He's 4-4, four, four, quest for two, and when he enters, he destroys an item, so that's... Very good now. What he's done. very good. He got he got better real quick. Like that was an unplayable card before, and now it's like yeah, he was random random in set one. You didn't see him in set two. Set three, he saw a little more play, and then set four, I think he's very strong, yeah, um, he's especially seen... in the mirror matches with these. Yeah, yeah, he's very good. Good stats as well. Four four solid. Dodges dodges Medusa. Yeah, I guess does a matter. usable five drop higher that dodges Medusa. Yeah, That's good. Yeah. Uh, six, uh, then into uh, Big Tink, four Giant Fairies, four Tamatoas, because everybody loves it to be so shiny. Uh, shiny! One, yeah. <laughs> uh, one Fire the Cannons, one Rise of the Titans. Now, Rise of the Titans, I'm still not convinced by this card. I, really I like it, only because Go on. With, with decks like Green Steel Discard, a lot of decks will throw in random locations because green steel discard can't deal with locations very good they don't run rise of the titans i don't think they have the space uh i, I don't like the one of of it i, I kind of get the one of the fire the cannons but um i'd probably run two but yeah i guess in the mirror match as well you'll see like mcduck manos in red purple you'll see queen's castle it's true. um but they're the only like troublesome locations i know there's that location in green i just yeah, don't so think it's that good so you got the lost cove in green which gives everything a an extra power and maybe an yeah. extra defense, I'm not sure, but it gives them an extra power, definitely. I think it's definitely an extra power. Yeah, and it, it basically gets your Diablo away from Brawl and your Beast away from Madame Medusa. Um, so it's a way of keeping your things alive around those. And I, when I built my version of it, which I now have built, I didn't put it in. And I didn't put it in because it's, to me, it's just it just doesn't do enough. And there are no. other cards like, uh, what's it, the Bruno card? What, what's it called? We don't talk about Bruno. We don't talk about Bruno. Yes. A great card, I think. You did very well not talking about Bruno then, dear. Well done. Um, yeah, it's <laughs> an excellent card, but I the list I had ran Coven, not that. And I was like, no, nah, I want Bruno in my deck. So anyway, um, so one Rise of the Titans, four one jump ahead, four Along Came Zeus. That's a big number of Along Came Zeus's. Um, especially for a deck that uh, that has so uh, quite a lot of uninkables. Uh, for a whole new world, which is a card I absolutely despise, both playing mm -hmm. with and against. Uh, three copies of Grab Your Swords, which I think is about the correct number of Grab Your Swords. And then it's got the standard uh, package of four Popsicle, which is in every blue deck. Uh, four Fortisphere, which is essentially another Popsicle. So you've got eight Popsicles now in Blue Steel, which is another reason I think it's quite a playable deck. Is because it does have them four fishbone quill and two lucky dime, so it doesn't run air either of the aerials that you can use in uh, blue steel. So, which I think is probably right. Honestly, when I was testing the version I had, I had the new aerial in it, the six cost uninkable one, and it just clogs your hand up, and you never get a good time to play her. Uh, she mm -hmm. dies. She dies to Medusa, which I know is like eh, dies. To she Medusa. doesn't. She does. She doesn't. She has. She has ward. Oh, she does have ward. You're right. She yeah, that's that's ward. the big reason a lot of people are playing her, and it's the reason uh, red blue are now starting to introduce Tremaine back into the deck. Speaking of disputed as well. Possibly. Yeah. But either mm. way, um, I never found a good spot to play it. Now I will admit I am not the best blue X player. Uh, I've been playing green steel for a very long time, so I've gone back to it. I do like. Yeah, it's a new deck green for you, steel. realistically, yeah. isn't it, for the set? Uh, yeah. So. Um, with that said, 
I do think it's a very good deck with the right pilot. Um, so, like, I think it's just a very solid amount of card draw. It can draw a lot of cards. Cogswood's very annoying. It's got access to very early Graviosaurus, which will do a lot of damage to uh, the green steel players. It's it's just decimating for them. So, uh, no smash though in this list. No smash. No baboom. Not sure I like that. Oh, just as an out for Diablo? Yeah, no. Well, the Baboom, yes, but the Smash, I think... This list kind of forgets that Ursula 3 exists. Mm. Um, and she can do you a lot, a lot of damage if you leave her on the board. Yeah. Because uh, you've got no actual way of, on its individually killing... The, the three cost Ursula Deceiver of All, which is still a very powerful card. Yeah. Uh, admittedly, some of the Green Steel decks have Cutter now, as well. To make it to make it cheaper, more attainable. Uh, possibly, <laughs> Obviously, possibly. that won't be the reason, but yeah, that uh, that slices a massive chunk out of the wallet. Yeah, so, it, it, you can get a list without Ursula Deceiver of All in it. Um, mm -hmm. I just don't know if I want to spend that amount of money on cards and then not play them, I'll be honest. Yeah, 100%. Um, it's I'll a grab, tricky one. I'll just quickly grab up the uh, the list I saw without it in. See what you think. I think um, running all these items and then Tamatoa and Diamond, things like that. Like, yeah. even though I play Diamond Red Blue, I hate losing to it. And it's annoying, especially when you get to a late stage in Blue Steel, where they can throw... And I've done it myself in Red Blue, where you throw down a bell and a dime and use it on the same turn. It's just like, oh, okay. Uh, I think in my store championships, the only I lost my game three in the top four just due to the fact that they could play dime and bell in yeah. the same turn. So yeah, any think... any other card, I, it wouldn't have. But I mean, it's part of the game. I, I've done it myself with bells. Um, I'm not running bell at the moment in my red blue list. I don't. There are better cards in red blue um, than bell right now. But it might see see play again just to get there a little bit faster. Because you're playing against another deck doing the same thing. Yeah, I think one of the reasons why Bell is better than the other reason Bell is better than Ariel is you can play it like and activate the play both cards, both the dime and the the Bell, and activate it a lot quicker than you can the Ariel. Yeah, yeah it's it's a strange them. one because obviously um, uh, Bell's inkable. Um, you, you don't, I think the thing is with the aerial is, so for Bell to work you need two pieces, for aerial to work you need other pieces but cheaper pieces, so obviously aerial we know, quest for three gets plus two if you have more items than your opponent you have so many items here, you can play her on turn six, turn seven or, it depends if you've inked with Quill and uh, one jump ahead, that's probably your turn four or five Ariel's out. Quill, you've already, as long as things haven't been destroyed, Quill's one item. You've probably played, like you've got eight popsicles. Your turn one is always going to be one of them. If you miss that, that's just very unfortunate. So you might have two, three items out at that point. And if you're going first, uh, Ariel hits five quicker. Um, she has ward. She's really only going to lose to Maui at that point. Nothing's going. You can't kill her apart from a rush character that's big enough. Uh, you can Mim Fox as well, I guess. Um, yeah, I think that's still a, a thing that people have to like acknowledge exists. Is that fox is still going to get you? Mm. There is a list with bodyguards in, though. I believe uh, is it Chen Pao? Yeah, Chen Pao. Is, there's a list. That's the list that I had built, which mm. had Chen Pao in it. He's four seven, and he he's hard to. Yeah, but well, you need a bodyguard that doesn't die to Medusa. Yeah, uh, Chen Pao does that. Chen Pao um, covers all your bases. He can't be Zeus. He can't be fox. He can't be. Uh, Medusa, he can be Tremaine, but he's no use on his own anyway. You probably wouldn't play him into a. Yeah, and if you want, if you're playing the Tremaine, if you're red blue, you you don't want to play that Tremaine to threaten the Chen Pao because you're going to need that Tremaine for the aerial. Yeah. Uh, you can obviously hit it with be prepared. Some of the blue steel lists, uh, sorry, the blue red lists I've seen are now not running be prepared. Ooh, fruity. Um, with the green steel dominance, I think it is with the Ursulas and stuff. You just don't you you don't have you have less of a chance to lose a card in your hand. Um, and you have other cards to compete with getting stuff off the board as long as you can maintain control. Yeah. Um, in my list that I was going to try out on Wednesday, I think I, I don't. I think all the be prepareds are out, but it's 
It's 24 on Inkables, so I just really need to test it. <laughs> That's a lot. Uh, I despise being above 14. I get to 16 hmm. from Inkable cards, and I'm like, I must put more Inkable cards in my deck. I can't possibly have this many. I think I go to 14, and but because of blue, uh, I go up because of Fishbone Quill. Yeah. Uh, one jump ahead, I don't actually see as an, ink, an uninkable card because it True. technically gives you an ink. Um, as long as you see it turn two. If I don't see it turn two and I see it later, I'm just like, oh my god. <laughs> but, well, that's Abby's every turn six, right? Yes. One jump ahead, one jump ahead, one jump ahead. Um, it does sound like it's yeah. got a decent amount of ramp in there, though, that you can... Yes, you can you can else. sacrifice quite a lot more. Um, and as long as you can ramp quickly, obviously you've got all your options. Um, I personally am happy Tremaine's back. Uh, yeah, me too. Yeah, but they are they are running. I believe the builds are running former. It's not like there's a split of two two. It's former Medusa still. She's staple up four, and then Tremaine's coming in. Um, yeah, well, I mean, but I, I like her, you know she's a body as compared to be prepared. Um, as long as you can maintain your board presence, um, yeah. So stop yawning. It'll be interesting to see. Um, yeah, definitely. I um, I really like Lady Tremaine. I think Medusa is a little bit too good. I don't think she should have been a 4-4. Um, beyond that, I think... Yeah, she dodges herself. <laughs> I do think that's a, a bit silly. Uh, mm. Or if she was a 4-3, like, even the other way around... Yeah, yeah, that's probably a good option. Like, yeah, 4-3. You can't make a copy Tremaine and do the same thing. No. Um, and Tremaine quest, quest for two. I think it'd be silly to give Medusa quest for two, four, three. I think just four, three questing for one probably was would have been yeah, good. Yeah, that would have been fine. I just she can survive a... quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah, she's a little bit too good. Not ban worthy. People who keep yelling about ban lists, please stop. It's not the, the, the first card people wanted banned, or like the first card of of uh, once set four was out. They think Medusa should be banned because she targeted I think three quarters of the legendaries. I get that, and the issue because Red is so popular that every everyone automatically feels well. So either, I think the top two things people think about now in the deck building is, does it tie to Medusa? Can I out Diablo? And then apart from that, as long as eight, the decks can do both of them, then people pick them. Yeah, I, th I think so. I think like the things like Beast, right, which are like a £30 card and it's dying to Medusa and you're like, oh, whatever. Yeah. Be sinkable. If you're playing against a red deck, just ink the damn thing and play something else. Like, yeah, is it yeah. worth playing a, playing a dead card, a card that's going to die, you're not going to draw from it, and then your opponent gets a body and you minus one? Yeah. Like, and then Green Steel is so rough. They play that, then it dies the next turn. Green Steel have a real issue with late game. If you can maintain your hand against Green Steel, you've won because they can't throw down enough. Uh, well, I guess for the most part, as long as you can continue to get rid of their things for about three turns... Yeah, you've got to have consistency. Once their board's clear and they're just slamming out whatever they draw, you know, it's going to be Tinkerbell or it's going to be Beast. They can't gain lore quick enough early game. That Their main thing is, you have no hand, I will now gain three or four lore a turn once you have nothing to use. But... Yeah, it, it's it's definitely a case of um, play, play cards, hope your opponent can't play cards, remove that element of their game from them and quest... England. Yeah, which is good. I don't think they need like, and I don't think any of the good cards in Green Steel need to be. Not that anything would get buffed, but nothing. I'm glad they didn't make anything really good that quests for two that that isn't something high cost. Yeah, like if Diablo quested for two or um, the Floodborn Aladdin. I think the fact that we have a three cost Floodborn that doesn't like you can just play on turn three. To, to have something to directly play after the Bucky, I kind of get shift mechanics because you have to do something in order to get them, but just like a general... Uh, the new Aladdin is, um, is insanely good. The three-cost Aladdin, uh, what's he called? Yeah. Um, he is the Brave Rescue. He's even better now with all these items coming in in blue steel. Yes. Yeah, the Brave Rescue is three-cost, three-three inkable card that you that quests for one, but when he quests, he, he destroys an item, banishes mm. an item. I really like the artwork as well. He is very good artwork as well, yeah. Mm. So this 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 list, which was, uh, which was in Thea's tournament, that didn't run uh, the three cost Ursula Deceiver of all was obviously you've got Diablo one, you've got Pegasus at one, the one one with evasive, which is just a slightly better uh, Pascal. Uh, you've got Robin Hood, the uh, one cost Robin Hood. Uh, you've got at two cost, you've got Bucky and uh, Ursula, the Deceiver. At three, you've got Diablo and the Aladdin we just mentioned. At four, you've got the Jafar Dreadnought. Uh, all right okay 
Yeah, of five. I like that card. I do like that card a lot. I just wish he was... Again, he's another one I wish was a 4-3 a rather than a 3-4. Because then he could kill me. Yeah. I, I don't I sometimes I don't understand when they have like certain cards have when it when this battle when this challenge is something when this banishes something in a challenge and they have two attack yeah and or three attack and they're really high costs and and let's say they don't have rush and it's like well unless you're getting this off early game by the time you get into late game most things are you know bigger and stronger you're not going to be able to kill them so no they need to they need to have a look at their um, their stat lines for some of the cards that they expect to be able to kill things. Mm. Uh, to do a thing because they just can't do the thing and they're costed as though they can do it and they can't yeah. do it. So anyway, with them we've got the five cost Pegasus, which is the most beautiful card that was ever created. <laughs> I right. thought you'd say that. Yeah. Tom's brilliant. favorite card. Tom's favorite card in set four is definitely the five cost Pegasus because he is majestic. Mm. Uh, five. Uh, sorry, four copies of Beast Tragic Hero, four copies of Robin Hood, uh, Champion of Sherwood, which are both expensive ass cards. Uh, Very. I think Robin's the most expensive he's, legendary now. He is now, yeah. 40, 45, yes. maybe 50? Yeah, he's he's expensive now. That's insane. Yeah, so then you've got three copies of Tinkerbell Giant Fairy, and then we go on to the songs, which are four copies of Let the Storm Rage On and Strength of Raging Fire, three copies of We Don't Talk About Bruno, so we won't talk about Bruno, but we will say that that card is very, very good. Good, uh, I like it. Two, now, this is the unusual part of this deck, because... Two copies of Grab Your Swords, which you don't see much in green steel decks anymore. Although this is a bit bigger. And then the last thing is two copies of Hidden Cove, which is the location we were discussing yeah. earlier that gives everything... I'll be able to tell you what it does now. It does, in fact, give everything plus one attack and defense while they are there. All right, and defense, okay. Yeah, it does give you defense, and it also, it, it's one cost, six health. It's one to move things there, so... Uh, but it does not give you any passive lore, so it just... Busts. Which is the one thing I thought it would be a lot better if it did. I don't know if it might be too good for one cost if it does that, though. Yeah, I think, like, when you look at why it's being used, yeah. to have that passive lore gain as well, because in the meta so dominated by keep like Medusa killing most things, having something like that, and then to gain that lore, it might just make Green's heal a bit too fast. I think but I, but when I look at Hidden Cove and I'm playing against someone that plays it, I'm like, well, yeah, you can move stuff there, but I'm not in I'm not in like a, a mega rush to kill it. Not like when you see a Queen's Castle. Yeah, I know that that yeah. gains two, but um, it, I, you know, it's not like it, it's like oh, if I can get if I can get rid of it in a couple of turns, but if I can just focus on the creatures for now, you know, I can wait. I'll draw a Maui at some point. Yeah, exactly. I think, I think it's I think if it, if you play that on turn one. And it gained you out yeah. every turn, and then you played your your Diablo, shifted it, and moved it there on two. Yeah, like, and it you'd already gained a law by then. And then the next turn you're on two law, your quest you go to three, and you play all the other gubbins that you're going to play after that, and you're like, yeah. oh, now my yeah. opponent's at five. And then your opponent has no hand, and yeah, you're and then, gaining yeah. passive law and questing law. Yeah. And then and then after yeah. that, you just completely ruin their hand, like with yeah. all sorts of stuff that you can do to it. That even probably wasn't the best sequence, but it was the one that came to me in my head. But it's just mm. that, you know, that incremental lore game where you're going to have to wait till turn five, realistically, before you can yes. Maui it to death. Yeah. Uh, and if I'm going first, I've gained five lore off it by then. So, yeah, I think it's started quite well. I don't think it will continue yeah. to see play. I think it's it's a superfluous spot in an already good deck that you don't mm. need. And I think Bruno is better because Bruno yeah. gets you back in the game. Like, it will... Your Tamatoa when you've wrecked or them. extremely punishes your opponent already at a point when you're winning. Yeah, like they they make <laughs> their big thing and you're just like, nope, that goes away. No, it's going in your hand. Oh, you have nothing in your hand because it's been discarded. Yeah, and now that's been discarded. Goodbye. They haven't yeah. cut Prince John though. They are relying very very heavily on having that Diablo to draw cards in the new versions of these decks. I've noticed. Yeah, Prince John's gone. Diablo's in. Yeah. Not sure that's one hundred percent correct. I'll be honest. I think I might add back at least one or two Prince Johns to up my card draw ratio. I think we'll see him. Um, I I personally think Diablo's the better card, Definitely. even though it requires three. 
three really and very rare you see green steel like like if they have to hard play diablo it just feels so bad i don't know to me anyway like even though it's only costing three still um you want the pressure of playing it on turn two questing with it keeping it alive yeah i think i think the the key to it is making the diablo the one cost diablo on one having a quick look and see what your opponent's got um mm. next turn play your bookie shift your diablo make them discard quest and pass the turn and draw card and you you've gained that advantage then yeah right? even even though even if they then kill it even though you've actually not gained technically an advantage cards wise because you're you're net even it just yeah. feels like an advantage and it, it yeah it, it does play through as an advantage. yeah if you don't actually need the action you've got rid of the draws just but yeah because sudden chill very often is just not a great card like so if you're discarding a sudden chill you're like, well, mm. I'm, I'm technically I'm sudden chilling you anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, like, so definitely. I've actually, lost the momentum of this particular thing, and then obviously on turn three you can then play your Aladdin, your Jafar, and then move up from there into like all the other stuff that's really good. And by that point, your opponent's on the back foot, and you're just questing with little dudes and winning the game uh, mm -hmm. that they're they're really hard to get rid of. So yeah, you can you, you just relying on your opponent not top decking a Medusa or be prepared or anything of that nature. So yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so they're the they're the things. Very quickly, I would like to discuss. Uh, I don't know how much you know about this situation, but uh, Sav Savage uh, Savage, I think Savage Savage uh, was accused of cheating. I believe yes. Mm -hmm. Has there been an outcome of this yet? Do we know what happened? Uh, so nothing officially from Ravensburger. As far as I'm aware, it seems... So there was another podcast I, I listened to. They got Savage on just to talk about the decks after. They had a quick chat about what had happened. Okay. Um, obviously, he's he had a chat with the judges there at the time. It seems as if there was no foul play. Um, you get a lot of different reactions from people. Um, I personally, I, 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 I watch Savage's content, so I might be favoured to the opinion that he was fine. I understand where he can go wrong, but I also understand why people would assume that it was intentional rather than unintentional. Uh, the big thing for me is that he... With this game, he plays so much Pixelborn that you do play paper and you can get a bit confused with certain things. Uh, if you pair that with the fact that you're at a big tournament, there's a lot of pressure. He is at a table that's being filmed. Things can happen. Mistakes can happen. Definitely. Um, it's a shame that the judges couldn't pick up on it. Um, yeah, that's... But in my opinion, just like if you add all those things together, I know I'd be nervous. Um, and I play paper more than so that I'm going to guess I do anyway. He plays a lot of Pixelborn. So, from, so you, you... from how I understand it, uh, he messed up how far I'll go. Uh, yes. And he inked, so he drew two off of how far I'll go. If I yeah, he drew that. two and inked a card in his hand that wasn't one of the two cards. Yeah, and he inked it uh, unexerted. Unexerted. Yeah. Um, which allowed him to play a Maui that could be used to kill a queen's castle. I, believe I think so. I think that's what it was. Yeah. So it was actually a game altering state. It wasn't it just was. a mistake that didn't. And and that's another reason why a lot of people think he was cheating. Yeah. So I would say that it's fair to say that he played. I believe he said this was his first in paper tournament. Big tournament. I he had tournament. played store champs. Yes. So big, yeah. big volume tournament. Big, 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 big. The guy is used to playing on his computer, recording his games and live streaming his games, I assume. Mm -hmm. I don't watch his content. Personally, I don't have time. I, I tend to just listen to what other people say and pick up on stuff and do my own research, mm -hmm. whatever. But uh, I'm led to believe he'd never played in a tournament of that size before. The camera shouldn't have bothered him. In my opinion, I don't think that's okay. That's fair. I've never had. I've never played at a table, a top table in a big tournament with a big camera, so I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm just thinking, you just maybe yeah, be I, one of the things. It, it would affect me. I know that much. Okay. Even yeah. though I'm quite just because you know it's there. With a camera on me, you know, mm. I stream. Um, I do two podcasts. I I still wouldn't feel 
confident if there was a camera on my game. Yes. Uh, okay. I, I I don't see the camera for a guy who does as much live content as he does. Yeah. As being a big. That's deal. fair. Um, yeah. I might be wrong. Like I'm, I'm, I, you know, he might be like, well, it's not my camera, and I'm not sat at home on my own, and you know, it's like mm. I don't like being surrounded by people. And he probably was because live stream games usually have people hovering around, including the cameraman generally or someone in charge of cameras and things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I can completely understand that because, yeah. like, walking onto a movie set, and you see all the big cameras and whatnot. I feel perfectly fine. Yeah, but okay. again, in that situation where it's a big tournament, I've already got enough pressure on myself to do well, and I'm on the feature table. I wouldn't. I I would freeze up. I yeah. I couldn't deal with it. Um, like I said, I personally think that it was. I I I'm happy to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. Um, if he feels he needs to cheat to win because of who he is, then that's a shame. Um. And mate, if you ever hear this, you don't have to. Nobody cares if you win or lose. Like you, you, you get by on your sort of content because of the person you are, not because. Yeah, he was well respected in the Hearthstone community, I, I believe. So, um, one other thing I would like to add to the fact that he had stated that he obviously hadn't played much in paper. But obviously, we did testing on Monday night. Um, Abby brought blue red, and it was the first time she'd played that deck paper. Yes, and obviously she like, and she plays a lot of paper. This is nothing on Abby, obviously, but just to link it to the Savage thing, and I understand where he's coming from. There was a lot of the time where she was um, just timing things wrong with the the Dragonstone item, the Inks cards exerted. Oh, yes. So and I don't know if you remember her. She kept saying, oh, you know, it's only because it's my first time playing this in person." I keep forgetting to ink this first and then do this because Pixelborn or like kind of notify you to do certain things and then the way you look at the board and the way she's inking and making sure that all her used ink is in one separate part to the you know that so it can happen even to people that play paper so my my personal opinion is I think it was fine um you've just got the I don't know if it's well, it might be an issue but they might if he gets some added pressure from knowing that people might be watching him a bit more at other tournaments because yeah, of it i mean it's just a shame because he's a like a bigger name so people yeah. will know him it's I not like there will be other people that cheated at that event i don't it's uh, unfortunately i don't want to say there were no cheaters at that event there will be people there's always people trying to throw things especially with how expensive those prize cards are yeah. there will be people trying to get the upper hand just to make a bit of money um which is a shame, but it happened in Magic. Very much. Year, yeah, right? yeah, it's yeah. going to happen everywhere. And these prize cards are insane. Yeah, they are crazy valuable. Crazy, yeah. crazy valuable. I've, I've never known anything like like it. Yeah, $250,000 no. for a graded 10, Mickey, the number 12. Plus $5 shipping. Don't forget that important part. Yeah, I Not only are you asking for a quarter of a million, million dollars. dollars. If you can just... Yeah. Five pound. Yeah, I just need that just... extra five for shipping. Yeah. I've just sent you this much, but a fiver onwards, because I... Yeah. yeah. So just to give you an surely at that point <laughs> you, you, you can give them free shipping. Yeah. <laughs> that just seems really stingy to if me. That, if that's sold yeah. on eBay, eBay would stand to make ten percent of that. Yeah. Just so you know. I mean twenty five K. Yeah. They make twenty five grand if they sell that card for him. To be fair, I'm is... still getting two hundred and twenty five thousand pounds for a card. I, maybe I get it if like if you paid let's say if it was up for a hundred grand, you, then you'd lose ten percent, ten grand to ninety. But oh. yeah, I'd like I'd rather communicate with someone in person. I think if I was actually at the event, let's say if I got there, someone comes up to me and offers me, I, I'll have a long talk with them. But that card will be. I'd rather do that than have to deal with processing fees and then post oh, and God, stuff. Yeah. No, I I wouldn't want to sell a card of that value on eBay, uh, primarily no. because I want to hand deliver it. Uh, yes, in a tiny <laughs> box. Yeah, it's not. Here's your card. I'd like to buy a house. Yeah, like I'm not having that card with Royal Mail. Let's put it that way. So, oh no, 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 <laughs> no, no it's no. not happening. How would you like me to bring you your card, sir? Because I, you know, if you live in America, if they pay me that much, I'll travel down the country to do yeah. it. I'd, I'd, I'd get, get the flight. I'd, yeah, I, I, if someone wants, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm buying it in America. Yeah, you're giving me that much money. I, I will happily come out, grab the money off you, spend a week there. Yep. 
I'll be, I'll be fine. We'll, we'll be okay. Yeah. We'll meet up. It's no problem. I'm going to hand you this card. I'll hand you this card and I'll take you out for dinner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you very much, you know, like all the rest of it. But no, I wouldn't be handing eBay 25 grand for the privilege of selling a card for me. I know that much. Yeah, right. they didn't put all the work in to win it. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's that's a big ask for me. But we're moving on now. Yes, um, yes. To we do need to move on. Something that my darling wife would like us to discuss, and we would also like to discuss because it is quite a big deal. And it has caused uh, uproar, I think, is the... Uh... <laughs> it's, I don't mm. think it's uproar just yet. I think a ruckus... Oh, we're ru we've is, only reached is, ruckus stage. Yeah. A slight rumbling. Yeah. There's it's, a... It's, it's, it's a ruckus at the moment, we're but we're waiting up... for further announcements. All right, we're building up to an uproar. So, uh, Fanfinity Agency posted on Facebook, I believe it may have been yesterday or Tuesday. Uh, one of those days, definitely. Yes. Um... The following, uh, the following Disney Lorcana Challenge Bockham tickets will become available on Friday, which would be tomorrow as, as of, of recording. recording. So last Friday as of this going out. At uh, 8 o'clock Central European Standard Time. So 9 o'clock here or 8, 7? 7. 7. 7, here. Yeah, seven, 7 in the UK. Uh, so I'm hoping we have no issues with that. <laughs> so I know, I know we were. I'm, I'm saying it like we're going to be fine. I know there's yeah. going to be issues. There's going to be issues. Anyway, carry on, dear. Uh, so they are putting up 1,024 tickets for the Friday main event, 1,024 tickets for the Saturday main event, and 100 attendee tickets. Which is not many. No, and I, in my head, they're the equivalent of Pokemon's uh, spectator tickets. They are spectator tickets, yeah. Uh, the top 32 of each main event flight will qualify for the top 64, which will be played on Sunday. And that's what's caused all the... So, things. well, it's not just that. Mm. No. Um, I'll read the rest of the announcement as well. Uh, so, to enter the DLC Bockham Hall, visitors will need either a main event participation or an attendee ticket. Participants and attendees will be able to enter the venue at all times and enjoy side events. Players can participate in the Friday main event or the Saturday main event, not both. Which is good. Yes. I think. Yes, because you don't want people, the same person booking two tickets. Hoarding tickets, yeah. Yeah, yeah you don't want that. The thing that I don't like about this well, actually, there's two things I don't like about this. One, which I agree with the judges on. Uh, yeah, so... Staff, I should say. Um, so, in terms of staffing, the staff call went up in April. Uh, so, by May, the team was pretty much decided. People had booked flights, trains, hotels um, for staffing. And now we are... Um, waiting on an announcement about whether there's going to be additional staff for the Friday or if they're going to reach out to everyone and see if everyone can rebook their work commitments slash travel arrangements um, and sort of compensate the existing staff for that. Um, and waiting to hear hear back if they need any more staff essentially so they're going to be cutting this really really fine um, yeah <laughs> they are. Um, very fine i think to announce that fine. so late a month before the event that they're now yes. doing two two days yeah, so yeah. two main events. I always think they're doing a good job, and then something happens, and I'm like, mm, mm. you're cutting it a bit. It's, I think just the tickets with a month to go is a bit rough. Um, my my quick two cents into this is the two. I'm happy with the two day events. It makes sense. They should have announced it sooner. Um, I feel like a lot of people like myself who are planning to go for the weekend, we're we're looking to fly in on the Friday, so we wouldn't play the Friday. Friday seems more uh, like I think they'll have a, definitely a lot more Germans playing yes yeah, I would have um, so. and then saturday's more international um so i'm hoping that helps with tickets because i really i really really want to get one um but um yeah the two 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 different days and then to kind of with all the judging kind of group to be thrown in we're like well actually it's changed now like could they not have got a heads up that they were get, like surely they didn't decide this on the day because they have to have the event 
So, but they have to have like the venue. Like they already have the venue booked for the Friday, though. Yeah, because they'll have it. All they'll have done is extended the Friday allowance or whatever, and spoke to the venue. And it wouldn't yeah. surprise me if they hadn't been either trying to negotiate it for a few weeks before they announced it, or they just went, "Oh shit, Lille was and Atlanta was so busy, we can't yeah. do that again. We're gonna have to." Uh, try and do this. Oh, look, the venue's agreed. Announce it now. Fix everything later, which is not the way to do it. So, yeah. um, I did mention last week, but it got lost in the episode. It's Easter. the missing episode. The missing episode. Yeah. Um, the, I am in a group chat with the person who uh, had judged Leal, and they did mention that their head judge report would be very, very, very big. So it wouldn't surprise me Um that if this is as a direct result or with additional factors um, Mm. of that head judge report. Weren't they having problems with melee, I heard? Which is, by the way, a garbage system. So there is is speculation that... uh, And obviously I wasn't at Lil, so I can't say. uh, But the speculation that melee went down a lot during the Lille event because it had 2048 players. So 2048, 2048 players. And it, it was struggling apparently. Yeah. Mm. Which is ridiculous because it's software built in order to do that and it shouldn't struggle. It's just garbage software. Uh, uh, so they adopted the worst software, they, well, second because Pokemon software is by far the worst, but I'll save that rant for another day. Uh, so there's speculation that that is that it is to lighten the load on the software <laughs> um <laughs> which i think that's nuts man i mean like come on now you're disney get better software right i don't know but yeah so uh the thing the problem i have with it is that although it is short notice but things change at short notice They've, they've also clashed it with the semi-final of the Euro, Euro 2024 tournament. Not that it matters, is, is the quarters, which is actually a very important weekend because it's the only games on a weekend, like on the Friday and Saturday, apart from the, op- I think the opening day? Or the opening, yeah, the opening days of Friday, but when you, so we were looking at this at work and we were looking at when all the England games could possibly be. Uh, all the England games are, unless you have time booked off, they're all on a work night. Quarterfinals is the only one where it's either on a Friday or a Saturday, so they will be the bigger nights. Now, Bochum doesn't actually have a stadium for the football, but that doesn't mean that prices aren't going to be inflated just to get into Germany and to travel around it. Yeah, um, is There is no easy travel option to Bochum that I've seen. If anyone knows any different, I believe let me know before I travel. But the I think one is to fly into somewhere and then train to Bochum. Dortmund. Yeah, so Dortmund and then train. And then get the train. The mm. problem with flying to Dortmund is... Dortmund they, is popular. <laughs> they do have a stadium as well. Mm. And they are... I'm not sure if they're playing on the... I think the quarterfinal games, I looked this up... It's Berlin, Hamburg. I don't think Dortmund was one of them, but that doesn't mean like it just. The, there will be other games that have just happened a day or two before, so there will be people around. Yeah. Uh, right right now, the prices. Are... Germany's gonna be busy. Go on. It will be. Um, the prices seem okay right now, but I actually wanted to jump the gun and book all this earlier. Uh, but my friend, who I'm travelling with, wanted to wait until we can definitely guarantee tickets, which I get. Um, if we'd booked it, though, I would have been like, well, we can just go for a weekend in Germany. It's fine. But um... I, think, I think I'd have done that anyway. I think if you're going anyway... and you Yeah, because I would have just been happy to go, to be fair. Yeah, I said if like... we couldn't get the tickets, we'll just get attendee tickets. Yeah, exactly. You just go, right? And I go for the event because I can still play for prize cards, which I would rather do. Yeah, it's a little bit expensive, but if you get some of those prize cards, it will probably take you over the threshold of what you paid. Yeah, plus I, I enjoy I, kind of going places. So yeah, I like going places as well. I I think mm. I I think if especially now knowing that it's the Euros at the same time, I'd have booked it freaking ages ago. And if I didn't get a ticket, I'd just be like, well, I'm sodding going anyway. Like I'm just gonna have the weekend away. Yeah, like, I'll book with you next time, Tom. That's that's easier. Well, I'm we can guarantee cheap. We can guarantee cheaper yeah, cheaper well, travel. I'm hoping that my good lady wife 
is going to be judging these events. And therefore, with, with fingers crossed... So, to put this into perspective, though... Yes. They've not yet put up the applications for Bologna. No, they, they've not gone up yet. No, which I've is been insane. Every single day. Yeah, it's in two months. <laughs> yeah. So I know, and I'm starting to feel stressed about it. Um, and I'm, mm. I'm literally checking every single day. Mm. Um, and they've not gone up so yet. Th this works really well for me with Evie wanting to judge Lorcana, and the, and the reason it works really well for me is now I don't have to either one like have the added expense of going away with both of us which is preferable because i don't like going anywhere without her because it, it just feels wrong to me um but also not only now are we both going i don't feel bad because i've left her behind so i get this great thing of like come on dear they're going to play locana off we go yeah the kind of oh i'm going I, i'm nipping to another country for a few days to play a card game yeah, sorry yeah. but now it's like no you can come with me no, and you no, can I'm judge i'm going with her now she's judging and i'm yeah going sorry yeah so evie you are going yeah. with evie she's dragging I, you yeah. along yeah, Come I on, mean, you're coming. You're coming with me to play a card you've game. Got to come oh and play no! So I can go and judge. Exactly. Now I get yeah. the, the, the thing of that. Of, no, I will enable you, dear, to go and do the thing you want to do. But also, yeah. I will come with you and play the card game that I've invested quite a lot of fucking money into. Um, so yeah. While we're actually, that brings up a, a good point. So that uh, is there anything else you want to mention on Bockham before I move on to something? And then I think we're all good. I think good. Uh, obviously tickets go out tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. So, so we're, we're recording Friday. this on the sixth. Yeah. 7 p.m. tomorrow. Yeah. Um, I think we'll no just talk about it more yeah. next week. Fingers yeah. crossed when I talk, I have tickets and accommodation all booked. So that's all I can really say on Bach and we'll go on to I next like topic. to talk about very quickly before we go, and I'll run this into next week as well because it will stabilize mm. a little bit more. Price of cards. The price of cards, Harry. Mm. Are the price of cards too high for, for Lorcana? Are we discussing this as a whole or are we just so it, non it, it, not including promos or are we including oh, no, promos no, no, not the promo nothing you can win nothing okay. that you get given all of that is always external to the four sets that you can currently buy okay of sealed or open product are, are the things cards, expensive is it too expensive to start playing Lorcana at a competitive level right now Though, so it's difficult because I'm an adult with a full-time job. <laughs> and I have also played card games when I was a teenager with a part-time job. Yes, you have. And I remember, it's I saw very... you those cards. Yeah, and it's... <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yes, I'm, I, I will actually say yes, purely because of Green Steel Discard. Uh, when you look at when people update those deck lists, it's like $700. If you want to run like the best, I, but the thing is, I, it's not the best of the best. And blue, blue red yeah, is blue also a top tier deck. Blue it is dear red because red there red. are just these random sets of legendaries that are too much. So in red blue, you have Maleficent Dragon and Sisu. Yeah. Sisu is new. I kind of get it. Maleficent Dragon is from the first set. Actually, thinking about it, what is the new? So Sisu is around thirty, I believe. I could oh, so be wrong. I got my same as a tragic hero beast then. Yeah, I got they they might have dropped. I picked up two for twenty seven each. Oh nice. Um, and I'll I'll put this out here now, um, because it's my it's one of my very few Lorcana purchase brags. I picked up Maleficent Dragons between fifteen and seventeen each. Not oh, right no. now. I picked them up at the start of set two. Oh right, okay, that's different. <laughs> yeah, uh, because they're it's now thirty thirty five. Empowered sibling is Sisu, isn't it? Yes. Um, um, but yeah, I do feel like cards are too expensive. Um, I felt that in set one with how scarce the decks were. And I think, like, I always wanted to at least give Steel Song a little bit of a go, but I wasn't justifying playing, paying 40, 45, 50 for Rapunzel. That's an outrageously um, and I pulled one. expensive card. Like, it, yeah. For what, it, for what it does and how many decks it's in. That card is yeah, it, like Rapunzel was on one deck, and yeah, the, yeah. Tragic like, Beast, I kind of understood him more because he was in every steel variant. But yeah, still, I think paying anything over thirty for a card's too much. That's my that's my personal so thing. If, you want to if buy he goes over thirty, no. Nah. 
If you want to buy our CISO at the moment, the cheapest one available uh, in on card market in the UK is €32.72. Euros and 72 cents. Mine's in Euros because I have an old account and I sell stuff on there. You can buy things on there at Lazy Dragon Gaming, but we'll get back to that in a minute uh, as we wrap it up with the glorious plugins that we always do. Uh, so yeah, €32.72, Euros and 72 cents, but the next cheapest one is 34.54, and then after that, 35 and up. So that's the mm. new CISU... Um, empowered sibling uh yeah. what is robin hood at let me just quickly check robin hood champion of sherwood uh, which i think but just to have it 31. has and i think to have a, a viably competitive green steel deck realistically a lot of builds will run uh, multiple copies of this robin hood multiple yes. copies of beast tragic hero yep. multiple copies of diablo and multiple copies of ursula yeah, Probably, see. if you look at like the top ten expensive legendaries, they're all sitting in the top six, maybe yeah, they are four the cards. cards in the, yeah, in the Maleficent game. Dragon is quite high as well. Obviously, yeah. Sisu. Sisu are the other two, and then everything else. Is yeah, just super cheap. Like big I can't think of anything else six. that's much. Like six. Yeah. Uh, um, Rapunzel. Because, I I feel that it is because, like, if you buy a booster box. And your legendaries are unplayable. They're not worth anything. And oh, they really you, aren't. Yeah, they're just. Not you worth get an unplayable money. legendary. They suck. Yeah, they go to like, like three pounds. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, you like three quid, which is less than the cost of our booster pack. So you're trying to, if you're a singles vendor like us, and we open a case, and we don't get an enchanted. So if we get the enchanted, we're going to make a little most a little bit. If we get a bad one, a little bit of our money back. If we get a good one, most of our money back. But Everything else comes out of the legendaries because the the uncommons are nothing, the the commons are nothing, the foils don't count really. Nobody really cares about foil index out in this game because why would you? The enchanted exist. I do think mm. it's a pointless rarity of having foils and stuff. But so anything you get that's playable, Sisu, Robin Hood, uh, Beast, uh, Diablo, you have to charge for that card because people want it and it's the only one that you're going to get any money for. Yeah, and that's the problem. Like you, that's where we're suffering the problem. But I, I, I do think cards are too expensive. Um, but hey, reprint them, put more out there, and let people. Yeah, win. That's why and that will casual happen. Players as well. We need casual yeah. players for that reason. You want as many casual players you get. They they love opening booster packs and and whatever. Uh, competitive players are garbage for that. They just buy singles. But you want casual players to open packs. Yeah, so, that's where I'm going now, unfortunately. And I like opening packs, but I just can't justify opening them packs. And if I feel like I haven't made my... Even though I don't really sell cards, if I feel like I haven't made at least a portion of the pack back, I, 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 I'm not happy. <laughs> or cards I need. If it's, if it's something I need, a foil I need, or a card that at least has a good value. Yeah. But apart from that, you just kind of like, yeah. And that's not to say every pack. If I buy five packs, if I get a legendary that's worth the cost of the five packs, or at least maybe half or a quarter, yeah. But yeah. a lot of the times they're not. I like sealed events and drafts for that reason. Once we get our new uh, premises up and running, we'll be getting more of that done. Especially mm. for Lorcana to get more packs into circulation, more cards into people's hands. It's a good way of doing it because you have the fun of the event and the fun of opening the packs and you get some yeah. prizes. And you can maybe open something good that you need. So you get all of it yep. into like a, an evening of having fun for your 20 Yeah, 25. there's kind of a win-win for everything. Yeah. Because not yeah. even all like the useful cards are good in draft. No, no, no. If that makes sense. Yeah, like, yeah. like, especially if it's like an Inklands um, draft or a sealed event, like the Aladdin that's really playable, he's not very good because there aren't really that many good items that you want to blow up. Uh, yeah. But, you know, and he only quests for one, so there's better things out there for that. But in, in yeah. the grand scheme of things, super playable card. But uh, definitely, uh, I believe we are coming up to time. Yes, yes. That, I was just about to tell yes. you that we need to start wrapping it up. Yeah, we are going to start wrapping it up. So thank you very much, Harry. It's been great talking to you again. Uh, thank you for having me as always, guys. It's a pleasure. This, hopefully this uh, this one records properly, and we will be able to put it out into the atmosphere of the world. Uh, but cool. we are Lazy Dragon Gaming, and if you would like to leave a comment, a subscription, and a like on this video, uh, which can be found only on YouTube, uh, we would appreciate that greatly. We also sell Lorcana on LazyDragonGaming.com, uh, where you can buy Lorcana and Pokemon and a bunch of other stuff. 
This right. podcast can be found on our website as oh, well. Oh, yes, you can also find this podcast on our website. So if you're watching and you've got, got to the end, thank you very much. But yes, you can find this podcast regularly on our website, along with all sorts of other things that we produce. Uh, the Lazy Dragon Gaming Experience, which is another podcast that we do, and a load of shorts and videos and all sorts of other cool stuff. But yeah, you can find us all there. We're not currently streaming at the moment because Pixelborn is dying and my, my good lady wife's hands are unfortunately in, oper in, in un operation, so we can't do that. But until next time, thank you very much for tuning in. We would like to see you again next time where we will be discussing, amongst other things, Frank Carsten, who's a great hero of mine. From Magic Dragon, <laughs> uh, and his victory in a recent tournament because we didn't get to that today so uh, we will be talking about that next time along with the meta update and all sorts of other lovely stuff so until then thank you very much for watching and we'll see you all next time goodbye thank you Bye.